Hey everybody, this is Abby from Realistic Kitchen and Gardens. Uh, today is November 2nd. We had three days in a row where we had a pretty solid frost. It was down in the 20s. And I just wanted to bring you through basically one last garden tour video. Um, honestly, as it gets colder um, and the days get shorter, things are really gonna slow down, um, if not stop completely. My next video, like this, will probably be um, doing some winter sowing in jugs, which I'll talk about at the time. Um, but again, it's been in the 20s, and this is Italian parsley. It looks really darn good. I'm impressed with it. I expected it to be completely flopped over. Um, parsley will tolerate some frost, so I'm not surprised. Um, this is technically an annual, uh, but apparently this one really doesn't care about the cold. Um, here is the oregano. The flowers seem to have really not liked it or they're just drying down going through their life stage. Um, oregano comes back every year. Poor didn't care. Uh, winter savory didn't care. Um, I topped up these beds with the new topsoil I got. These are chives. Um, it was the big plant in the middle here that I basically pulled all the dry stuff out and covered this over. Um, and I just topped up this area with uh, topsoil to kind of give a little more insulation to this time. I want this plant to be huge, like take up half this bed so I can have a really nice source of time. Um, again, we've had three hard days of frost and this bed has lettuce, which is something like ice, ice something lettuce. And these little seedlings really didn't care at all. They look good. They don't look tender per se. Um, and then there's cilantro. And I'm pretty sure this is dill. And I can't remember if dill is really that hardy to, um, against frost. I don't, this doesn't look like either cilantro or dill to me. I don't think I planted more parsley. That would be silly of me to do. But anyway, this bed is empty, topped up with topsoil. This bed is basically empty. It's just a, um, uh, this is the green manure cover crop that I put in. Um, and I, again, covered it over whatever was there with topsoil. Um, so this is just coming up through the topsoil that was already there. Um, peas, probably oats, um, hairy vetch. I don't know what else is in there. That garden hasn't done anything, although this is a good example. Um, it's about 45 today, or right now, um, but this lemon balm has serious frost damage, which I knew it would. It doesn't do, it's technically tender, but it's also a perennial, so it'll just die down and come back next year, allegedly. Lemon balm is furious about the cold. Um, it is a tropical plant and it is not hardy to this area, so I'm not surprised whatsoever. I could probably still harvest the stalks and I keep forgetting to. Um, and this is Good King Henry. This is um, a perennial, very cold hardy, uh, basically wild version of spinach. Uh, wild, eh, not really wild. It did get some cold damage in the areas that weren't protected very well, um, but I've used this already and it doesn't really taste like anything it's just texture but this is one of the very earliest greens to come up in the spring um, and doesn't care about 20 degree weather. Calendula has mm, some cold damage. I've also trodden upon this and harvested the flowers and all that. Chickens don't care about the cold. Um, there has been frost damage in the garden. I'm gonna be upright with you, um, more than I expected. Uh, most of my garden is right now garlic that barely has come up. Um, I had my husband cover <laughs> the middle row um, with um, grass clippings. He mowed the grass, I don't know, a week ago. Uh, but this is one and the greens will die in the cold. Um, but this is hard neck garlic. It's part of their life cycle. The greens will come up, die back. They'll go dormant underneath the greens. 
or underneath the ground. And then here's another one poking up through. And that one does have actual cold damage, turning that weird yellow kind of color. Um, and then they'll come back in the spring um, and go through their actual life cycle throughout the summer and all that. Um, these are the two sections of the same cover crop um, cardboard, no cardboard. This was kind of tilled. Um, a lot of this stuff is cold hardy. Um, I'm trying to think of what isn't cold hardy. Technically the turnips are not, but they might be protected enough from like the other foliage around it. Um, onions are cold hardy to a point. I really need to cover these up. I was reading more on them and this bulb is supposed to be under like the bottom inch of the plant is supposed to be underground. But I mean, with the frosts, you can see all the greens on them are fine. They tolerate frosts easily. You usually transplant these out in March or April when you still have frosts for another month, something like that. Meanwhile, this catnip doesn't really care either. <laughs> Goddamn catnip. Um, let me go down this row. Um, so the rest of this row, this is row, this is technically row D. Um, A, C, no, E, sorry. D and E. I skipped B because of what my garden plan was last year. So coal crops, cabbages, broccoli, um, Brussels sprouts, kale, all that stuff is cold hardy. And a lot of the old wives tales say that they are better after a frost. But the plants are not actually that cold hardy, uh, frost tolerant, really, really cold frost tolerant. So this plant isn't showing much, but you can see some damage it has and the leaves are a lot more, um, eh, like, kind of like silicone, like a soft silicone um, compared to what brassica leaves usually are. Now these just started heading. These, this is um, Red Express, which is 60 days and Green Express is 50 days. Um, I'm starting to wonder if the red stuff is more hardy than green because here's the green. So this one has started heading more and the head feels okay, loose, but okay. But um, this leaf is flaccid. Um, the cells, so basically what happens when a lot of plants freeze is that, um, along with like blood cells and certain things with freeze damage, um, is the cells, because of all the water in the cells, they'll freeze and then burst, um, and they'll lose their rigidity. Um, plant cells are a little bit different than animal cells, um, but basically this is what it looks like. The cells are still together, but they're not doing well. Um, so I think this will still head up, maybe, or I'll just have these cute little teeny cabbage balls. This one's really loose. This one had really bad frost damage. Look at that. Um, I haven't looked at this garden since we've had the frost. So I didn't want to look. Um, this one has really bad frost damage, but the inner leaves are still protected. It's loose too. I mean, these aren't the tightest, these aren't the tightest, um, heads I've ever seen. I may go back to tiara. Tiara I grew in the spring, so this is kind of different. The one I'm dreading most is this broccoli. Um, I can see from the kitchen how floppy these leaves have gotten and how almost like freezer burned. You know how freezer burned stuff looks? Um, well, the head is still there. Look at that. The head still looks okay. Um, and it has a few side shoots that are a little floppy. I really should have put frost protection on these, but I, I don't know if I forgot, just didn't think of it or what. Um, but I didn't think these plants would be this frost tender. I mean, I knew in the cold, cold, you're supposed to cover them, but I guess I expected them to be a little more cold hardy. Um, this head looks good and feels good. It's really not fragile feeling at all. Um, this is Waltham broccoli. 
Waltham heading broccoli. So this is the type that's supposed to produce a nice big head. Um, oh, this is a good view of the frost damage too. So like this is turnip green that is decimated. I have no idea what this fluffy stuff is. So I need to look at the packaging. Some of the greens are damaged. Turnips are in the brassica family too, by the way. So we're not overly surprised. Um, but I need to put up frost blankets or greenhouse plastic on these cabbages if I want them to survive. And I did get a big piece to go over this netting, piece of greenhouse plastic to go over this netting. Um, I think kale is more cold hardy than others. So this is the purple kale from Annie's. This has no cold damage whatsoever. So I'm a little bit impressed because they're such young plants or small plants. This is the like dinosaur style, Lachino style kale. And this does have frost damage. So I wonder if this is just in a weird nook, little teeny nook that protects it or if it is actually that variety of kale. Um, but it is still growing. It's still producing new foliage. Um, it's kind of like, <coughs> ooh, oh, my Swiss chard. Uh oh, I didn't realize Swiss chard was so um, not frost tolerant. Uh oh, you poor plant. That's my bad, I had no idea. I didn't even look at it. Um, even these peas have frost damage, so. I, uh, I overestimated how hardy all these things were, but back to the, back to the kale, um, you know, it's just like, it's kind of like the butternut squash that I had this year, the Waltham butternut squash. I mean, the plants were infested with, um, <clears throat> powdery mildew and they didn't look great, but they were still surviving and putting off new growth, which means they were hardy to it. It wasn't killing them, but it's not great for it either. Um, I think this is that case with this type of kale. That type of kale apparently doesn't care. I'm going to have to look at more cold hardy. Um, <clears throat> so those are the Oregon sugar snow peas, which were volunteers. And here's actually a full pod, couple pods that got full frost damage. And these things are like, fold it up, roll it like a piece of paper soft kind of thing. I mean, these are destroyed, but the plants will, wow, look at that. You can even see the, you know, how the plant kind of, the tissues kind of tore and shredded up as it went through the freeze thaw process. Um, but this piece is actually fine with it, not affected by cold damage at all. It's amazing what these little micro pockets will do. Um, the, all the peppers, obviously are very dead from the cold, which isn't surprising. I never really bothered to cover them. I wasn't expecting them to survive and I wasn't moving towards them. The petunias finally got cold damage. They're not killed by any means, but they're not in good shape either. Um, so is the basil, but that's been dead for a bit. Um, this is the purple or burgundy. I've recently questioned myself, sprouting broccoli. And it's been producing a nice head that I've been checking on lately. The sun is going to confuse you guys. This little knot of leaves is okay, but these ones have the same kind of cold damage that a lot of the other ones have had. Um, so I think these plants will be okay if I cover them or include them in this, you know, in this greenhouse kind of setup, um, which I was going to set up tomorrow. This has a nice head on it. Um, and there's a nice couple little, where is it? There's another one there. Um, nice couple, few sprouts coming up. These don't produce as big of heads. It usually produces a lot of little sprouts, um, like smaller florets. This one looks good, actually. This little knot of leaves look good, too. This little tip is soft. Um... This is actually, these are the ones that are the tallest and may very well get exposed to the sunlight first. Um, and these ones are the lowest. So I wonder if that has to do with it. But this one has, this is the last one of the, what, six? 
yeah. So these are doing okay. Still should have covered them. Um, and the Brussels sprouts. So this is the Long Island, regular old Long Island. Um, I recently harvested some of the sprouts that were kind of um, too loose to really be a good sprout. The top leaves don't look great, but they never do. Um, this plant has a little bit of that cold damage, but the other leaves look good. But these sprouts are doing the same kind of thing of really loose, opening pretty wide. Um, I. I don't think I'll be growing these ones again. These Long Island, these are supposed to be the heirloom variety, open, open pollinated and all that. Um, that one's really loose. There's a good number of sprouts on here, but they're all doing the whole soft, loose, opening too far thing. That one isn't bad. I don't know if I'll have any, ooh. Look at this one. I was just going to say, I don't think I'll have any good Brussels sprouts out of my garden, but this one is rock solid. That one's pretty good too. I wonder if those ones are just exposed to a different little microclimate over there. Look at this. This one looks pretty good. Um, and then this is the Redarling hybrid purple Brussels. Um, this is supposed to have, the Long Island is supposed to have like 90 days, 80, 90 days post-transplant and then the redarling is supposed to have like 130 to 145 um and these a lot of these are still pretty solid so that's good these are meant to come off these come off pretty easily when the sprout the actual little sprout starts well, Redarling's doing better than I expected. And honestly, all these Brussels sprout plants, I expected to be a goner after that hard frost. I still think I'll cover them loosely with uh, frost fabric. This one's super far behind. Look at all these teeny tiny, just starting compared to that first one we were looking at. This one looks a little looser, but they're getting there. That one's nice and tight. All right, one more, and I wanna look at my parsnip. This one's really short, but I guess it's just kind of fallen over. Also called lodging. This one isn't too, too bad. Looks a little bit loose. All right, and here's my one parsnip. Well, it's still alive. Parsnip should be pretty cold hardy, and I feel like that's doing fine. The uh, chickweed, I'm convinced chickweed is a cold season plant. If you have any idea about chickweed, um, it's a wild plant that covers the ground. Chickens love it, hence chickweed, chicken. Um, and I don't think it gets cold damage. <laughs> it's a nice ground cover. People can eat it too. Uh, but I don't usually bother in these radishes that have very long been in the ground since, shoot, June? They don't care. So, um, really that's the garden. I mean, that's the patch that the chickens had worked on and I did some of the litter over, over here for them to spread out and let it decompose over winter. Um, and the cosmos completely got killed off from um, those hard frosts, which I'm not surprised. They did survive a little bit of a cold snap, but, um, they're dead now from that actual frost. So, it's all right. It's part of the cycle, and we always have next year. So, if you like this kind of stuff, please like, comment, and subscribe for more, and follow my Facebook page, Realistic Kitchen and Gardens, for, uh, more frequent updates and tidbits. Bye!